I'm Rhonda, Director of Groundwork Arts, and today we're going to make abstract paintings out of cardboard boxes and acrylic paint. This project is inspired by artist James O'Keefe, who makes abstract paintings that explore some of the most fundamental elements of art, shapes, and color. Here's what you'll need. Acrylic paint, a jar of water, cardboard box, a paper towel, paint brushes, gel glue, scissors, and a paper plate. The first thing you want to do is unfold your box. Super fun. I bet you never knew that cardboard boxes were so beautiful. They are full of surprises. They have so many shapes and lines, and all of them are different. So we have squares and rectangles and lines, and it's pretty incredible to take and move around and think about how you might use it for your abstract painting. So the first thing I wanna think about is the outline of my painting, and I wanna start cutting, so I'm gonna use my scissors to cut some shapes. There's all kinds of geometric shapes that you can find in cardboard boxes. We have a small rectangle, and a big rectangle, so this is about scale, small and large. And for squares, you can find triangles. Uh, you can cut circles, you could do half circles, uh, rhomboids, and the possibilities are endless. I like this piece, but I think I wanna add on. And I'm gonna cut a shape from this other. You can also cut into the existing shape. So I want to cut a triangle out of this one. And I'm going to turn it around and I want to cut this tab off. Just keep playing with it. The next thing you can do is add on. So I actually, I like this tab here, but I want one similar up here, maybe like that and that. After you've moved around your pieces and they're in the place that you want them, you've experimented a little bit, then you can get your glue out and start gluing the additional pieces. You can make every color in the rainbow with these three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Whenever you're working with a dark color and a light color, I suggest starting with the light and just taking a little bit of the darker. Sometimes you use a palette knife, but this works just fine. So you can see that blue and yellow make green. Okay, so we're gonna pull the lighter color first and grab just a little bit of the darker color from the edge you can always build up, but you can't take away. So when you mix this together, you have a really beautiful orange. A color wheel is a fantastic tool for understanding color theory. Yellow, red, and blue are primary colors. To create secondary colors, simply mix yellow and red for orange, red and blue for violet, and blue and yellow for green. To create tertiary colors, combine yellow and orange to make yellow orange, orange and red for red orange, red and violet for red violet, violet and blue for blue violet, blue and green for blue green, and green and yellow for yellow green. Complementary colors are opposites on the color wheel. Analogous colors are three similar colors next to each other. Oranges, reds, and yellows are warm colors. Blues, greens, and purples are cool colors. Joseph Albers was an artist, designer, and color theorist. His homage to the square series, a collection of nested squares, shows how different combinations of color and form affect our perceptions and emotions. He published a book in 1963 called The Interaction of Color. According to Albers, the best way to study color is to experiment with it. For abstract artist Ellsworth Kelly, painting was about exploring his view of the world. He painted what he saw in nature by abstracting the forms into simple shapes and bright colors. 
Kelly often experimented with shaped canvases. By curving and shaping corners and covering them in a single color, Kelly transformed his canvases into the composition and the wall became the canvas. Cuban-born artist Carmen Herrera was an artist but also trained as an architect. Her interest in simplicity and geometry can be seen in her shaped canvases with striking color contrasts. She often played with just two or three colors. It helped her decide if she liked a color and to understand how one color affected another. She believed that less is more and saw beauty in a straight line. I love mixing my own colors. You can get them straight from the bottle, but it's way more fun to dream up your own colors. And I want kind of a blue green. So I have come up with the color that I love. I want to show you how you can do a tint and a shade. And I want to make a tint, so I'm going to take some white and lay the white down. You can play with different variations by pulling some of the darker paint in. I just want you to see the variations that you can get from a single color that you've developed on your own and how you can shift it by adding white or adding black. Tints are pastels made by mixing a color with white. For example, pink is a tint of red. A shade, on the other hand, is made by adding a little black to a pure color to darken the hue. So I'd like you to mix two colors that you really love, and I want you to think about how they work together. So in this case, we have kind of complementary colors. We have a pair of cool colors, like a purpley blue and a dark green, and a bright blue with a dark green, also a cool color. Then we have some warm colors, a yellow and almost like a melon orange. So choose two colors and mix them and get ready to paint them on your board. Mixing your own color is magic, and painting can be calming and a wonderful stress reliever. Color is powerful. Just one color can communicate a feeling or mood. Blue-green might mean peace and strength, pale pink viewed as sweet and graceful. Abstraction sometimes seems like it's really simple and not very important, but in fact it's very important because you're getting into the fundamental elements of art and when you restrict yourself to one thing, like playing around with shapes that are in cardboard or mixing your own colors, the possibilities are actually quite endless. So I encourage you to go grab a box, tear it apart, and start mixing your very own colors.